Hello, in this Vulcan video, we are nearing the end of drawing a triangle. We are doing the command buffers now. So the command buffers are used for whenever you want to do something on, you know, called some sort of function on the GPU. So we'll be using the command buffers to, you know, render, to, you know, draw our triangle. You know, we won't actually see it yet. We'll be seeing it very shortly. But, you know, it is very important that we get the command buffers done. First of all, we need a couple of new variables. The first one is going to be of type VK command pool. Call it underscore command pool. And next one is going to be a vector of VK command buffers. So VK command buffer underscore command buffers like so. And now what we're going to say is if we go to the init Vulkan, at the end, we're going to call a couple of methods. Create command pool. Again, these methods do not exist at the moment, and we will be implementing them in this video. So the next stage, we might as well just, you know, handle the cleanup. I'm going to say VK destroy command pool underscore device underscore command pool and for the callback we'll put no pointer again as usual feel free to put something else if you want to put something else for the callback and now we are going to get on to implementing both of those methods that we just created if we scroll down to where we've got create frame buffers we'll put it after that we're just putting the methods after the previous videos method that we created so after this before the create shade module so now we're going to do the create command pool method first. The void create command pool. And okay, first of all, we're going to get the device family indices, the Q family indices, Q, uh, call it Q family indices with a lowercase Q. We've done this sort of thing before, and we're calling a method that we created before, define Q families, underscore physical device. And we're going to create the command pool create info object now. So VK command pool create info, call it pool info, and put some curly braces there. I'm going to say pool info dot S type. So we're going to set the S type now is going to be equal to vk underscore structure underscore type underscore command underscore pool underscore create info next we're going to say pool info dot q family index equals q family indices dot graphics family dot value and this is no it's meant to just be like that Okay, so yeah, that was a mistake on my IDE's part. And next, we're going to try and create the command pool. So we're going to say if VK create command uh, There we go. Now you need to specify the Vulkan device, a reference to the pool info that we just created. I don't know why IntelliSense is buggering up in terms of the way it looks. No pointer. Reference to the command pool that we created earlier. Walla is equal to VK underscore success. Then we'll throw a, a runtime error. And just say fail to create command pool. Okay, so now that we've done that one, we've got the create command buffers you know, method to implement, which is you know the one we're here to do. Create command buffers. Okay, so first of all, we just need to match the buffer size to the swap chain frame buffer size as well. Underscore command buffers dot resize I'm gonna say underscore swap chain frame buffers dot size 
like so. Next, we're going to create the command buffer allocator info object. So VK command buffer allocate info, alloc info, that's what we'll call it. Curly braces and semicolon. Now we're going to set the S type dot S type equals VK underscore structure structure underscore type underscore command underscore buffer underscore allocate info. Now we're going to say alloc info dot command pool equals underscore command pool. I'm going to say alloc info dot level and this is going to be equal to vk not vk vk underscore command underscore buffer underscore level underscore primary so this basically specifies if the allocated command buffers are primary or secondary command buffers and you can put you know primary or secondary here so that's a little extra bit of information i'm going to put alloc info dot command buffer count equals we're going to cast it to an unsigned int and if you on some pieces of source code if you see what is it size underscore 32 t i think that might be what it is that's just the same thing as this underscore command buffers dot size so we're going to get the command buffer counter now and next we're going to try and allocate the command buffers so we're going to say if VK allocate command buffers and if it's underscore device alloc info underscore command buffers dot data and if that isn't equal to VK underscore success then we're gonna throw an error. We're gonna say throw STD colon colon runtime error and we're going to say failed to allocate command buffers. Okay, so next what we're going to do is start the command buffer recording. And we're going to do that by looping through the entire command buffer vector. So we're going to say a for loop unsigned long long i equals zero i less than underscore command buffers dot size i plus plus and now we're going to create the command buffer begin info object first so vk command buffer command buffer begin info begin info curly braces semicolon and I say begin info dot s type equals vk underscore structure underscore type underscore command underscore buffer underscore begin underscore info like so now we're going to try and actually begin the command buffer with a Vulkan command I'm going to say if vk begin command buffer and we need to specify the command buffer, just the current index there that we're in the loop. Reference to be begin info. And make sure it's not equal to, or if it is, if it isn't equal to VK and store success, something's gone wrong. And we'll handle this accordingly. We'll say throw std colon colon runtime. Hmm, that's the wrong one. So runtime error. Now I'm going to say failed to begin recording command buffer. One second, I just want to quickly check something. Uh, yeah, make sure audio is recording. For some reason, I thought audio might not be recording. <laughs> uh, well, you'll only be hearing that if the audio was recording, which it is because. Although I would have stopped the video. And next, what we're going to do is start the render path. 
So to do that, we're going to say VK render pass begin info render pass info curly braces. Next, we're going to set the S type the render path and frame buffer. So these first parameters are the render path itself and you know the attachments to bind. So we created a frame buffer for each swap chain image and that is what specifies it as a color attachment. So we're going to say render path info dot s type equals vk underscore structure underscore type underscore render underscore path underscore begin info render path info dot render pass equals underscore render pass semicolon and I'll say render pass info dot frame buffer equals underscore swap chain frame buffers and we're going to put i like so next what we're going to do is set the offset offset for the render area so these Define the size of the render area. The render area basically defines where the shade loads and stores will take place. And the pixels outside the region will have undefined values. And it should match basically the size of the attachments for best performance. So first of all, we're going to say render pass info. The render area dot offset equals curly brace 0, 0. We'll say render pass info dot render area dot extent equals underscore swap chain extent semicolon and now what we're going to be doing is just clearing the color now and setting the clear value count back to one so yeah let's get down to that and let's say vk clear color value vk clear color call it clear color equals put three curly braces three lots of them and i'm going to put 0 0.0 f 0 0.0 f 0 0.0 f and 1.0 f plus semicolon at the end so we've defined a clear color to simply basically be back black with 100 percent opacity VK clear value, sorry, not color. Now we're going to say render pass info dot clear value count equals one, and we need to set the clear value. So render pass info dot p clear values equal the reference to clear color, like so. And what we're going to be doing now is First of all, we're just going to begin the render pass. So VK CMD begin render pass underscore command buffers I and we'll put a reference to render pass info. I'm going to put VK underscore sub pass underscore contents underscore in line like so. So you can either do inline or secondary underscore command underscore buffers. Inline is where the render pass commands will be embedded in the primary command buffer itself and no secondary command buffers will really be executed. The secondary command buffers is where the render pass commands will be executed from secondary command buffers. Feel free to check out the source code and because I've got that covered in there with a little comment. Next, we're going to bind the graphics pipeline. So VK CMD bind pipeline. And we put underscore command buffers I. We put VK underscore pipeline underscore bind underscore point graphics underscore graphics pipeline. And now we're going to tell Vulkan to draw the triangle, VK, CMD, draw. To do that, we just put underscore command buffers, I, and we can put three. So this is the vertex count, the instance, only one instance, 
and then for the first vertex is in zero the first instance is also zero as well and next what we're going to do is actually call the render pass to do that vk cmd end render pass sorry did i say call the render pass i meant end the render pass and you just simply provide the command buffer vector and the current index and we're going to try and end the command buffer as well so if vk end command buffer underscore command buffers i if that is not equal to vk underscore success, I'm going to say throw std column column runtime error. They failed to record command buffer. And let's give it a run. And we've got one error there that might disappear in a second. And it seemed like it was just because. Visual Studio took a bit of time to catch up and let's see if we got we only the anisotropic filtering error and we had that before so that's it we've implemented command buffers in our Vulkan application we're almost there to draw in the triangle almost there and I'll see you in the next Vulkan video remember you can join the discord group if you have any questions there's over 4,900 members now and you can join the Vulcan channel in there, post any questions you have. You can check out all the source code from every video, including working projects for every video is from the GitHub page. Both of those links are in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next Vulcan video.